we need to get this corn out so the birds will start using some cover and they're out in the corn just having a great time what I'm going to do today is uh, well first of all I'm using my my Browning trusty B80 20 gauge 26 inch barrel it's uh, it's been around for a long time uh, date code is PB so I have had this this 20 gauge for a long time six and a quarter pounds gas operated one of my favorites um, it's got a three inch chamber has a rough time with seven eight ounce loads one ounce loads and up does a great job in fact uh, the shots I just fired were one ounce double A's and the ejection was six seven feet so and that's what I typically use for dub so uh, not a clay's gun for me, but a hunting gun. So it's one ounce, seven and a half for doves. And uh, we're going to do a little testing here for pheasant loads, wild pheasant loads. So I've got a target set up, 46 and a half yards. So the question is, what does it take to cleanly kill uh, a rooster at 46 and a half yards? And I'll try a couple different 20 gauge loads. Maybe I'll go to 12 gauge. Now, for starters, I've been excited about uh, these new Winchester bismuth loads because Winchester seems to really have it down as far as their uh, latest version of buffering. I'm a little confused. You can call it disappointed. This is 20 gauge. It's a 3 inch shell. 1 ounce. Bismuth number 4s. Now, this particular load was introduced in January, along with the 12 gauge load, ounce and three eighths. It was originally advertised as being ounce and an eighth, which I thought might be ideal, an ounce and an eighth of bismuth buffered number four. However, these just came in and they're one ounce, not ounce and an eighth. So that's a little on the light side for this 46 and a half yard stuff, but we'll see what it does. That's, that's how I learned. So, Browning B80, True Lock Precision Hunter, modified choke, my favorite choke, and we'll see what it does at 46 and a half yards. Whether the pattern density is adequate uh, to cleanly take uh, a nice two and three quarter to three pound wild Illinois rooster or not. We'll see. So let's zoom on in again, 46 and a half yards. And a little wobble there, 46 and a half yards. Let me go down and, uh, and see what happens. Recoil is not bad at all, but of course it is a, a gas-operated 20 gauge. That's not feeling like uh, an ounce and a quarter lead load that I would normally use. Well, here's the results. The latest Winchester 20 gauge bismuth number 4, 1300 feet per second. Actually, pretty darn good. Better than I would expect for a one ounce load. So what we're after, at the range you're shooting, uh, three pellets in the torso of a pheasant, dead pheasant 100% of the time. So every study that there's, that's been done is you're looking at three to four pellets in the torso. And, of course, uh, some people claim they take pheasants at 25, 30 yards. 45 to 50 yards is not uncommon. We have a lot, of, a lot of nervous roosters around here that don't hit the air um, within 35 yards. So a 45-50 yard shot is typical. 
Anyway, that would do it. Show you from the back. But this is where we're at. You have probably an inch of drop. Um, approximately out, out of this range. So if you, if you want to whack a rooster at 60 yards, most people forget to hold over. You might want to hold over slightly. But for a one ounce load, yeah, pretty darn good. Uh, for preserved shooting, where you need to use no tox, perfectly adequate. Because of course this will this will tighten right up as the range decreases. So that's test number one. Now I'm going to use one of my old standbys in 20 gauge. Uh, the Federal Grand Slams, I don't know if they call them Grand Slams anymore, now they just call it a turkey load. It's lead, one ounce, one and five sixteenths ounce of lead number five, 1185 feet per second. So the part number is PFC 258 space five, number five lead. So it's got a flight control wad, the old type of flight control wad, it's buffered, and I have had excellent results with this particular load for many, many years. It's been out for a while now, I don't know, 15 years maybe, but this does a good job on pheasants. If you can use lead, it's not always the case. So let's see what it does. Oh, you bet there's more recoil, but of course, this is off bag and cradle. So when you're standing and walking, you're not even going to feel the gun go off. So this is absolutely a better pattern. I really, I like it. I like this for a 46 and a half yard pattern. Looks good. Let me go down and grab it and uh, go with fresh paper again. Now for the grand finale. This is a one ounce load of Apex Tungsten Super Shot number eight. Just one ounce, and it's an amazing shot. But uh, it, this is an amazing load. It also comes at an amazing price. So that's the only negative. Anyway, we'll see what it does. Same 46 and a half yards. Same B80, same True Lock Precision Hunter Modified Choke. Yeah, that's a dandy. So here's the results. We've got June the Wonder Dog sniffing around. She'll be busy next weekend. Anyway, here's the results. Same gun again. I'm now I'm being redundant. Browning B80 True Lock Precision Hunter Modified Choke, 46 and a half yards. This is what we get from one ounce of number four bismuth, which I think is pretty darn good for a one ounce load. Uh, you're going to have a denser pattern, obviously, with uh, the Winchester ounce and I think it's ounce and three eighths, uh, number four and twelve gauge. So, uh, if you need to use bismuth and you've got longer range uh, shots um, with bismuth, go twelve gauge. That's uh, 
Best advice I can give you. Here we have federal ounce and five sixteenths buffered lead number five standard go-to load for years easily uh, a 55 yard wild pheasant load beautiful job really so that's now you know why I've been using this for so many years Winchester makes a very similar load also ounce and five sixteenths lead number fives so for just a standard go-to load if you can use lead that means dead rooster out to certainly 55 yards plus finally one ounce apex tungsten super shot number eight and same choke true lock precision hunter modified unbelievable density so what you're looking at is uh, an 80 yard wild pheasant load there's no question about it and just look how dense at 50 yards 50 to 50 to 60 yards I can tell you tungsten super shot number eight people worry about the small shot this is tungsten it blows right through the bird so you're not gonna find any any shot left in your bird it just it blows right through um, certainly 55 60 yards but that's easily uh, an 80 yard load I mean the density there same rules apply um, three to four pellets 100% dead pheasant and you're gonna get it you probably get more than you want at this 46 and a half yards but out at uh, 70 80 yards you're still gonna have a dead pheasant you need to hit them but uh, if you're walking all day, and we get that a lot, particularly late in the year, you're walking all day, you walk miles and miles. The limit is two wild roosters a day. And if you walk all day, and you're, well, I hear a rooster cackling in the background. You walk all day, you're pooped, your dog is, is pooped. Uh, and you get that one shot, a rooster hits the air at 50, 60 yards, if you want the capability of putting the bird in the sack. See that pheasant cackling? That's got the dog cranked up, as it should. Anyway, uh, you're not going to go through more than two shots a day. So yes, the ammo is incredibly expensive, but considering gasoline, vet bills, 400 bucks to... Uh, to clean June's teeth here last week, but hey, she's looking good for, for 10 years old. So, it's your choice. All, all around purposes, if you can use lead, that's what I use, that's what I've used for years. Hard to beat number five lead on pheasants. Four works as well, but you lose your pattern density. So it's all up to you, bang for the buck, lead wins, performance in 20 gauge, uh, lead certainly wins versus bismuth, but if you have to go with no tox, go 12 gauge with bismuth, number four is pheasants, same way with, uh, with mallards, tungsten number eight, that's the ultimate. You don't need a 12 gauge and you certainly don't need a turkey load, that's just one ounce and it's just an incredible load and you can with a turkey choke that <laughs> there's no problem uh, putting a jelly head on a on a gobbler at 35 40 yards I mean it's 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 high dollar but you get high dollar performance so that's it we'll see you next time